Welcome to the Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a five second delay. Use this time to complete your notes. When you are done, push play and move on to the next slide. This presentation will begin in five seconds. Welcome to Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture 1.6 on the duties of citizenship and it's time to talk about civic duty. Have you done yours? Well, I don't know. Have I? We want you. Am I supposed to join the armed forces? Pay taxes here? I thought if I didn't pay taxes, I was going to go to jail. I voted. Well, well, I voted in one election, but I, I didn't vote in that other one. Jury members, please report to room 8 to sign in. Nobody wants to do jury duty. And then there's the rule of law. Are there times that I don't have to follow the rules in this country? She should run. Oh, does that mean that I should run for elected office as well? And everybody tells me to volunteer. Do I need to do all of this and more? Well, it depends. It depends on what are my duties as a citizen? And are those duties different than my responsibilities as a citizen? Well, we're going to try to answer those questions today. And with that said, let's go to the next slide. You already learned the requirements for becoming an American citizen. You're either born here or you're naturalized. But we haven't talked about what it means to be an American citizen, so it's time for us to define citizenship. A citizen is a member of a state or a native or naturalized person who owes allegiance to the government and is entitled to protection from it. This is my country, I am loyal to my country, and my country will protect me. But in America, citizenship goes so much. Much deeper. The concept of American citizenship traces its roots back to classical Greece, power to the people. But remember, only certain males could be citizens in Greece. That's much different than it is here today in the United States. So what did the Greeks think about citizenship? The Greeks believed that citizens were required to be active citizens. Not that type of active active in their community. The Athenian oath was taken by citizens and set forth their civic responsibilities. Then there was Pericles. He was the leader of Athens and Greece during its golden age or height and he stated in a funeral oration or memorial speech the value of democracy and civic virtue. Finally, Greeks were required to be active citizens. They were required to vote, serve as jurors, and otherwise further the values and ideals of the city. So we have to see how much of these ideas we find in Greek citizenship made their way into our ideas of modern American citizenship. Go to the next slide. The roots of American citizenship trace themselves back to ancient Greece, but we need to look at another classical era civilization to see the underpinnings of American citizenship. The concept of American citizenship also traces its roots back to classical Rome. Roman citizens were required to vote, pay taxes, and serve in the military. And like in Greece, men were the only people who could become citizens, but unlike in Greece, not all male citizens were equal. You had the ruling class who were the patricians, you had the working class with less power who were the plebeians, and you had the non-citizens or the slaves. Also unlike Greece, the idea of required civic duty beyond these obligations of being required to vote, pay taxes, and serve in the military did not exist in Rome. So what did we do here? American citizenship takes ideas from both civilizations. Like in Greece, there is only one level of American citizenship, and the duties, responsibilities, and privileges of citizenship uniformly apply to all citizens. But like in Rome, American citizens are only required to complete certain civic duties. Everything else is a responsibility but it's a voluntary responsibility. Go to the next slide.
So what are American citizens required to do according to the law? Believe it or not, there are only four duties of American citizenship. Number one, citizens must obey the laws of the United States and their state. You must follow the rule of law. Number two, citizens must pay their federal, state, and local taxes. I want you to pay your taxes because you don't have a choice. Number three, citizens must serve in the armed forces if they are called to do so under selected service. It's called the draft, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. And fourth, citizens must serve on a jury or appear as a witness in court when they are summoned to do so. You are served a subpoena, a piece of paper to come to court, and even if you're Santa Claus and you know if someone's already naughty or nice, you must serve on a jury. Go to the next slide. Yeah, so American citizens are only required to do four specific civic duties. Well, what happens if you don't do those duties? There are penalties. Citizens who choose not to fulfill their civic duties face legal consequences. A citizen's failure to obey the laws can lead to fines and or jail time. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. What about taxes? A citizen's failure to pay taxes can lead to the seizure of assets. That means they take your stuff and or jail time. Are you seeing a theme here? Then we got to talk about the military. All males are required to sign up for selective service and serve if called or they will be arrested. You must serve in the United States military if you sign up for selected service and you are drafted to serve in the military. But there's a lot going on here. People who conscientiously object, basically they say they will not fight on principle, they can serve in a non-military capacity. More importantly, the majority of the armed forces today are made up of voluntary members. There has been no draft in this country since 1973. But there is a movement to require women to also sign up for selective service based on the fact that women may now serve in both combat and non-combat military roles. Finally, what happens if you don't go to court? A citizen's failure to respond to a court order subpoena may lead to a fine and or imprisonment. As American citizens, we are only required to do four things. But if we fail to do those four things, there's a chance we're going to jail. Thank you for watching this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.